The last challenge that I'm going to discuss about today is about how we can de develop individualized intervention. So that, that is what we are really interested to have. We really like to have individualized uh, interventions. And why individualized uh, interventions are important? Let me just show you another recent publication. It, it was published just a few days ago in, in JAMA Psychiatry. What they have done, they uh, had a database of people with TMS, the, those who, are, who have been depressed, and they received uh, TMS, and they had different levels of response to TMS. So some of them were more responsive to TMS, and some of them were not responsive to TMS, okay? So retrospectively, they started to think about, okay, why there are people who are responders, and why there are people who are not responders, okay? How we can differentiate these two groups of people from each other. What they have done, they measured the level of uh, correlation between the areas in DLPFC and the area that we call uh, subgenual anterior cingulate cortex. So they consider subgenual anterior cingulate cortex as, as a node, and these are the level of connections that they had in dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Obviously, there are areas that highly correlated with subgenual anterior cingulate cortex, and there are areas that are highly negatively correlated with subgenual anterior cingulate cortex, okay? And their hypothesis was, if you do the stimulation on this specific site, then your stimulation would be successful. Because then you, when you stimulate in this area, you are stimulating an area which is negatively connected with subgenual anterior cingulate cortex. And we know that if you down-regulate subgenual anterior cingulate cortex, we are able to improve the mood. So the idea is just, that negative connection is what we are interested to promote. So they realized that some of these patients, they received a stimulation far from the optimal point. And they found that there, are, there were subjects that they received the, the actual stimulation close to the optimum stimulation site. And remember, the actual stimulation site was done before. So they, somebody else has done the, the trial, so they have done the stimulation before. And these are individualized functional connectivity maps. And they measure the optimum site based on the, the functional connectivities after the stimulation. Okay? What they found, they found the distance to optimal site was negatively correlated to clinical improvements. So for these people that they have this activation, they were responsive and they were not responsive because they received intervention in the wrong side. And they realized these maps are significantly different between different, different subjects. So as you can see here, subject number one and subject number two, I mean these two subjects, they, their map is not the same. And even the, the site that they received the, the stimulation were not the same. So they realized that if you want to do the TMS in the right way, they need to consider the, that function connectivity map to subgenual anterior cingulate cortex if they want to have a better response to, to TMS. So that is something interesting. And we had this issue with, with other, other sorts of interventions as well. Let me just make you another example. Uh, this is one of the studies they have done with methamphetamine users with, uh, with uh, TDCS. And as you can see here, there are subjects that in reality, when we do head modeling, they do not receive very much electrical current to the areas that we, we have been stimulating. And the question that we had, whether there is a relation between, between the response to treatment and the level of the actual uh, stimulation current that they receive in their brain, and we found that, yes, it was just a small study, but we realized that in the frontal polar area, there is a correlation between the level of uh, electricity uh, and the level of response uh, to the stimulation. And it is true for the, for the active group and not for the sham group. So we showed that, showed that before. If you are interested, we have published some of those 
piece of information in a paper in, in human brain mapping, so you can find that there. So the idea is what we are doing right now, we are doing a stimulation with the same input. For example, we, we are giving subjects 2 milliamp. For, for all the subjects are receiving 2 milliamp of a stimulation. But in reality, the level of current they receive in different parts of the brain is different among subjects. So a group in UCL, they have done a really nice job. It's a recent publication. They showed that instead of doing the same stimulation for ev every single individual, what we can do, we can do different stimulation intensity to have the same level of current that we finally have in the brain. So that is another level of, let's say, individualization of, of intervention. So one of the challenges in the field of cognitive neuroscience is how we can do individualized interventions, how we can use brain mapping, individualized brain mapping, as I showed you before, using individualized brain mapping to do individualized stimulation. So this is one of the things that you will hear about that later on very much in the next couple of years. So we will see that there would be lots of publication in that area, that people try to find a specific meaning for brain activations that we have and trying to optimize the interventions based on these individualized activation maps that we have. Okay, that is the end of this, this part. Mm -hmm.